One of Fort Walla Walla Museum's most iconic artifacts is the Abbott Downing and Company passenger wagon. Coaches transported passengers, express, mail, and small freight. They were a great improvement to walking, traveling by horse or mule, or farm wagons. The Concord coach is larger and heavier and was used on routes with the best roads and easiest terrain. The passenger wagon was used on rough roads and hilly terrain, usually causing mud and dirt to be thrown onto the passengers, so people started calling them mud wagons. Both types of coaches were manufactured by the Abbott Downing and Company in Concord, New Hampshire and shipped by boat to the west coast. Both coaches carried luggage and freight in a covered compartment at the rear. Important items like mail, money, or gold were carried in a compartment beneath the driver's seat. Luggage, freight, and additional passengers also could ride on top. The driver always occupied the right side near the brake lever. The messenger rode shotgun and usually carried one too. He was responsible for the mail and monies on board. The coach bodies sat on something called thorough braces, strips of cured bullhide wrapped around stanchions. They held the coach like a cradle so it could rock smoothly back and forth. But that doesn't mean stage travel was comfortable. Inside are two bent seats that each held three passengers. Everyone wanted the front seat facing the rear because it had the smoothest ride. On short bumpy trips, passengers could get motion sickness and there was no heat and no air conditioning. Sometimes passengers even had to get out and walk to lighten the load. Some rules for stagecoach passengers include don't argue with the driver or keep the coach waiting. Don't swear or discuss politics or religion. Don't fire a pistol from inside. Don't jump out of a runaway coach. Don't lay your head on your neighbor's shoulder to take a nap. Never ask, are we there yet? You'll freeze faster if you drink alcohol in cold weather, but if you need to, bring your own bottle and be prepared to share. Finally, don't complain about the food at the stage stop and always carry small change. Stage stops were placed every 10 to 20 miles along the routes for changing out tired horses or making repairs. Fresh horses were ready to be hitched at each stop and blacksmiths followed the routes and camped wherever their anvils were unloaded. Around every 50 miles was a home station where passengers could rest and buy a simple meal. The wheels were greased and a fresh driver would take over. These operations used a lot of resources. It was also slow with coaches traveling from four to five miles an hour. The trip from Walla Walla to Wallula would take half a day. The first stagecoach to Walla Walla was brought by John Abbott from the Willamette Valley. Abbott started the first stage line from Wallula to Walla Walla in 1859 using a Concord coach. This era of transportation was very important in our area, but by the 1880s, steamboats and railroads were faster means of travel, followed by auto coaches and eventually automobiles. By the 1920s, coach lines had pretty much been phased out. The museum's mud wagon is one of two in Walla Walla. It was built around 1903 and arrived in Walla Walla somewhere around 1913. They were used for races at the fair and hauling dignitaries around during parades. With the hard riding on rutted roads through rivers and over mountains, coaches didn't last very long. The wheels and undercarriage were the first parts to fail. In 1970, our coach came to Fort Walla Walla Museum and has been on display ever since. We can confirm this coach was built by Abbott Downing and Company because of three markings found on the original parts. We also have the name of the blacksmith stamped on the hound plate, J.A. Jervius. It's a colorful piece of history and a reminder of what transportation looked like around here not that long ago.